I'm Dr. Mickey Karam. Uh, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I am a clinical professor of obstetrics and gynecology and urology at the University of Cincinnati, and I work mostly out of the Christ Hospital in Cincinnati. Um, I'm a OBGYN by training. Uh, I went on to do a fellowship in what's now called female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery, and my practice is pretty much dedicated to female pelvic floor disorders. The first book I published with Elsevier was Urogynecology and Reconstructive Pelvic Surgery. That was in conjunction with Dr. Mark Walters, who's a urogynecologist at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, that book is now in its third edition, and we're actually uh, just starting to plan a fourth edition. Um, it's uh, a book that is dedicated to the uh, subspecialty of female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery. Uh, the second book that I published with Elsevier is The Atlas of Pelvic Anatomy and Gynecologic Surgery, and we just released the third edition of that book. Uh, that's in conjunction with Dr. Michael Bagish and it's a, a very large atlas that uh, addresses all aspects of pelvic anatomy and uh, gynecologic surgery, whether that be vaginal surgery, abdominal surgery, laparoscopic surgery, cystoscopic surgery, hysteroscopic surgery. Um, and then finally, and most recently, I'm the uh, editor of a series of books um, entitled uh, A Video Atlas of Female uh, Pelvic Surgery. And there's eight books in this series, five of which are available now. And yeah, um, this, this, um, this project has been very exciting because in contrast to traditional textbooks, uh, we've tried to supplement the text and illustrations with video clips. And these can be video clips of live patient surgeries, many of them are anatomically based and we utilize cadaveric dissections. Um, I really think that that's the whole ne next level of education for the surgeon because in general when you think about a textbook it's somewhat static in regards to reading about a procedure, or visualizing illustrations or pictures. Uh, nowadays we have the ability to actually show how the procedure is done. So this eight book series um, uh, basically covers all aspects of, of female pelvic surgery. Um, I think it's going to be very attractive to the gynecologist, the urologist, the colorectal surgeon, um, and, it, and it is the, uh, most of the chapters are supplemented with videos. And again, it doesn't go into a lot of uh, uh, data analysis, it's more about technical aspects of pelvic surgery uh, with, as I said, uh, a lot of demonstrations. Um, pelvic floor dysfunction in general is a variety of quality of life symptoms and many of them are, as you stated, difficult for a woman to talk about. Things like bowel control and bladder control, things like difficulty with intimacy and female sexual dysfunction. That area is not your, your sort of common uh, bridge club discussion, if you will. Um, so, but with that said, these symptoms are extremely prevalent and the largest segment of our population in this country is the female above the age of 60. Female pelvic floor disorders inevitably basically are going to affect everybody sometime in their life. So they're, they're very prevalent. Uh, many women unfortunately still have the concept that this is a normal part of aging and they live in silence and suffer in silence and unfortunately that's, that's been where we've at but fortunately I think we're starting to be more mainstream and making hopefully patients more comfortable. And the first step to that is educating the physicians. My wife and I started a foundation uh, called the Foundation for Female Health Awareness. It's a non-for-profit 501c3. The objectives of the foundation are twofold. One is to educate women on a variety of different gender-specific health issues. And obviously the pelvic floor is, is you know, certainly in, in that list of, of things that we do. And then secondly, we support uh, uh, much needed unbiased research uh, in gender specific medicine. And so it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's got two folds and uh, we've been very fortunate. We've had a lot of support from a lot of institutions and 
research arm has also been very, uh, very well received. You can find out more about it if you want to go to www.femalehealthawareness.org.